Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Hospital Expansion and Renovation Groundbreaking Ceremony. My name is Tim Petriga, and I'm the Vice President for Advancement here at Mary Freebed. Today's a very important and historic day for Mary Freebed, and we thank you for sharing it with us. Our story has been 122 years in the making. Today we turn the page on another exciting chapter as we break ground to begin construction on a new 190,000 square foot, six story expansion. This building will double our current space and enable us to better serve more patients, families, and this great community. At this time, please stand for the presentation of the colors on the north end of the tent by the United States Marine, Marines of Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, 24th Marine Regiment, 4th Marine Division, based here in Grand Rapids. At the conclusion, please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Wally Tett from the Grand Rapids Police Department. Oh, the land of the free and the home of the Out of 110 Mary Freebed Guild members, I drew the long straw. I am the lucky one who has the privilege to welcome you to this exciting and historic event. However, I feel a little funny standing here alone. One of the special things about the Guild is that we are a collective group of women, caring, nurturing, risk-taking, dedicated, and passionate women. And I welcome you today on behalf of the entire Mary Freebed Guild the current membership, as well as the many women who have come before us, since 1891 to be exact. I would ask all of the Guild members present today to please rise and join me in welcoming you and thanking you for your role in making Mary Freebed Hospital the special place that it is. Thank you. Our mission has always been very simple. Restore hope and freedom through rehabilitation. It is what we do and what we have done so well for 122 years. It is the belief in this mission and the passion with which we pursue it, which allows Mary Freebed to care for and serve thousands of patients each year. And now here we stand today, breaking ground on a state-of-the-art 190,000 square foot home for hope and freedom. But of course, it's not all about the facilities. It's as much about our amazing staff, leadership, physicians, board members, volunteers, and guild members. We like to think of ourselves as a family, a family with a common goal, to help our patients achieve independence through rehabilitation and to advocate for the disabled in our community. We love this picture of guild members taken in 1912. And as you can see, big hats were the women's fashion of the day. So much has changed since the early 1900s, or has it? <laughs> this is a picture of our current Guild Board of Directors. Our history is built on countless hours donated by caring and devoted, devoted women serving the disabled and those in need of rehabilitative services, both at Mary Freebed and in the community at large. In fact, during the past 30 years, the Guild Fund has donated more than $17 million to community organizations that support our mission. Today, we continue that support. It is my honor to announce that the Mary Freebed Guild is providing the lead gift of $16 million for the new Mary Freebed Hospital. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you so, so much. That's incredible. The expansion and, and renovation program is an aggressive $54 million project. The Guild gift will support approximately one-third of what's needed to complete the project. A capital campaign is currently being developed. But today I'm proud to announce that Don Lovers and Kate Pugh Walters have agreed to serve as capital campaign co-chairs. We thank them both for graciously accepting these leadership roles. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Don. 
this is one of the fastest growing hospitals in the United States. I mean, you take a look at the growth of Mary Freebed, over 50 percent uh, in outpatient, inpatient services over the last two years, uh, 29, 39 percent growth in the number of staff, 287 people uh, hired in the last two years. That really points out the economic engine. And then when you take a look, the bishop and I were just talking about the excitement of Wealthy Street and, and to have this building stand on this primary corner next to St. Mary's Hospital is, is just a jewel. And I think all of us in this room, and you, you have all been part of this, and I have to tell you, Susan Ford, the Fords is and will always be a real part of this town in our heart, and we thank you for what you're doing and the excitement that we have here today. So I just want to thank you. We look forward to your support. The governor of this state, Rick Snyder, couldn't be here today. He asked me to come in his place, but he sends his regards. He sends you his respect, and he sends you his congratulations. Our goal is to have a healthier state and a healthier Michigan, and what's going on here in this corner will certainly move us a long ways to achieve that objective. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Over 14,000 patients came to Mary Freebed last year. After a catastrophic event, a disease, a surgery, or a birth with a disability. Each will tell us that what it takes place here at Mary Freebed is, can be described in one word, magical, magical. Many patients that weren't supposed to walk again walk out of our hospital. Patients that can't talk learn to talk here. Patients that come to Mary Freebed who can't think or be independent many times leave here as independent thinkers. Patients get reacquainted with their loved ones here while their families learn, as they do, how to turn their disability into ability. Yes, we treat patients and we treat each other as family. This Mary Freebed family of 1,000 staff members and hundreds of volunteers assure our patients that they have hope and that they'll find freedom and independence and maybe even a little magic. As Shelley mentioned, Mary Freebed has been blessed with community governance by thousands of women during the past century or more. And they've transformed their passion and aptitude for people with disabilities into action. Two such women were a mother-daughter duo. Hortense Bloomer was born into a successful furniture family here in town. She was president of the Mary Freebed Guild from 1931 to 1932. She often brought her daughter Elizabeth with her when she volunteered with disabled children at our hospital. These lessons of the heart motivated Betty to later teach visually impaired and deaf children to dance. She also became a founding member of the Mary Free Bed Junior Guild in 1935. And that Junior Guild is still a very active part in Mary Free Bed. Before Susan comes to the podium, we'd like to share observations about these two women from presidential historian Richard Norton Smith, who many of you know, who was also a director of the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum. Much like her daughter, Hortense was ahead of her time. Certainly someone of strong mind and will and character, who clearly passed that on in her family. Someone who was a pillar of uh, the community in Grand Rapids and certainly uh, Mary Freebed. The best evidence of that is what Hortense allowed her daughter to do. She didn't just become a Martha Graham dancer. She didn't just go to New York to, uh, to discover herself and, and her horizons. She was allowed, and I suspect in some ways encouraged to do that, to, to think outside the box. I think that was very much part of the parental legacy. comes to certainly the uh, issue of cancer and women, 
uh, American history is divided into two periods, before Betty Ford and after Betty Ford. Uh, she had decided to go get a routine checkup um, uh, following the wake of a friend. But at the same time, she had other friends um, coming to visit. Uh, Lady Bird Johnson and her daughters were in town. The Fords uh, had uh, accepted an invitation to participate in groundbreaking exercises for the um, LBJ Memorial Grove down along the Potomac. There's a photograph of, uh, of everyone together uh, in, in Mrs. Ford's room. And um, what you don't notice until it's pointed out to you is at the foot of the bed is a small suitcase. Uh, that's the suitcase that she had packed that she was going to take with her the next day. Uh, if not, I think maybe that evening she checked into Bethesda Naval Medical Center. Betty Ford, being Betty Ford and being Hortense's daughter, uh, seems never to have contemplated anything other than public openness. While she was still in the hospital, she heard news reports about the reaction to her surgery and um, the fact that it had already inspired countless women all over America to follow in her footsteps, to get checkups. We'll never know how many people didn't die. We'll never know how many people didn't suffer uh, emotionally um, who might have had they not had the example of Betty Ford. And that's quite a legacy. The fact that it will be memorialized uh, in this way, in her hometown, through an organization that um, bears not only her stamp, but even more that of her beloved mother. Uh, I, I can't think of anything more appropriate. I'm really delighted to be a part of this exciting groundbreaking, and I'm particularly honored knowing how proud Mom and Grandma Bloomer would have been this morning. Thus, it is altogether fitting that we gather in this hospital and in this city where Mom's life story began and then ended 90 years later. Grand Rapids and its institutions, including this great hospital, formed the core of Betty Ford's lifetime of service to others, including, and like her mother, and at this wonderful hospital. Mom decided that the public should know exactly, and I mean exactly, what was happening to her. She decided to take a courageous and yet very controversial step to tell the world about her disease. And so she did. And in an instant, Betty Ford rendered a public service that changed the history of women's health forever. But mom's triumph over breast cancer didn't end when she left the operating room. She participated in tough and compassionate rehabilitation. And because of that rehabilitation, she went on to live a full and, oh my goodness, a wonderful and productive life, as we all know. It was not just the skill of her physician that allowed Betty Ford to conquer breast cancer. It was that skill and the subsequent rehabilitation that made her triumph over breast cancer complete. So I do take great pride in knowing that my mom and Grandma Bloomer would be personally delighted to join me this morning in this announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce the Betty Bloomer Ford Cancer Rehabilitation Program at Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Hospital. 
May God bless and watch over you and each of your breast cancer patients who come here for their care and rehabilitation. Thank you all very much. Our staff at Mary Freebed could not be more excited about the groundbreaking for our new building and the naming of the Betty Bloomer Ford Cancer Rehabilitation Program. I personally have always appreciated Mrs. Ford's willingness to be open and sharing of the challenges she faced in her life. This strength of character to think of how others could learn from her experience is an incredible gift. In the United States, we have over 14 million cancer survivors. And by the year 2020, there will be 18 million. Uh, current estimates are that only 5 to 20 percent of cancer patients and survivors who would benefit from rehabilitation are actually receiving it. We recognized how important it was to integrate with our oncology colleagues, to learn from each other, and to bridge the gap between diagnosis and treatment of cancer and rehabilitation. We are developing a specialized cancer team of therapists and other healthcare professionals under the guidance of Lori Pearl Krause, who is a PhD nurse practitioner and is passionate about the care of cancer patients and their journey. This fits well with our mission and our fabulous staff who deliver hope and freedom by increasing function and quality of life. Susan, thank you for allowing us to honor your mother and grandmother. May we positively affect as many lives as your mother did with her courageous actions. Thank you very much. On the count of three, we're all just going to throw a little dirt. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yeah.